Hey guys, Patrick here. I'm a PhD student at Oxford, and in this series I share the best study tips and hacks that I've been using myself. Today's video is on the top three tools for research students. Let's do it. I first talked about connected papers on my TikTok, which got 1.6 million views within a couple of days and even caused their servers to crash. Clearly, not many people have heard of connected papers before, so let's expand on that video here. Connected papers is a tool to help students find and explore papers relevant to their field of research in a visual way. Let's walk through the steps. My current work focuses on building an algorithm for de novo genome assemblies. Here's a paper I found interesting and want to see which other papers are related to this paper. It generates a graph of papers that are related to this paper. The bigger the bubble, the more citations the paper has. The darker the color of the bubble, the more recent the paper is, and the more similar the papers are, the closer they are clustered together. You can sort papers based on similarity to the current paper you search for, the number of references, citations, and the year it was published in. Each paper includes an abstract, and if you want to build a graph with that paper, you can directly do that on connected papers immediately. My main source of finding similar papers is still the references section of any paper. But where connected papers differs is the following. One, if you're stuck in finding a similar or relevant paper. Two, if you're writing a literature review. Three, if you want to make sure you haven't missed any papers. For instance, connected papers will show you papers that are highly similar even though they don't directly cite each other. Four, all of the above saves you a ton of time. Trust me. For these reasons, I use connected papers as a tool in my workflow. VOS Viewer and Research Rabbit are good alternatives, but I think Connected Papers has a more intuitive user interface. When you write a literature review, thesis or paper for your undergrad, masters or PhD, you will collect and read and review a lot of papers. Keeping track of all the literature you come across is very important because you need to cite all of your work. I use Mendeley as a reference manager. Mendeley is a free reference manager that I've been using since my undergrad years. I never had any problems using it and you don't even need to use your university email address to sign up. First, add the extension to your browser. Next, anytime you come across a paper you want to save, you click on the extension and download the reference and PDF directly to your target folder. In this example, this paper is relevant for my de novo assembly folder, so I will save it there. On your Mendeley desktop or website version, it will appear in your target folder almost instantly. You can read the PDF directly on Mendeley, so you don't ever have to search for the paper online again to read it. On Mendeley, you can add notes, annotate and highlight with different colors. I use different colors to highlight a key point in the conclusion versus a key observation found in the result. You can export citations to your Microsoft Word or LaTeX editor and it does the referencing automatically for you. Here is an example for LaTeX. There are tons of alternatives, including Zotero, EndNote, Papers and more. While they differ in one way or another, they all serve the same job, which is to save all of your references and make your life easier. Comment down below which one you use. I use a LaTeX editor instead of Microsoft Word for several reasons. It's very simple to handle equations, figures and bibliographies, indexes and more. With LaTeX, you focus on the content of the document and the program handles how the output is formatted. On Word, you actually end up spending a lot of time correctly formatting everything and this is especially true the bigger and the more complex your document gets. I use Overleaf. It's online, free to use, you can have unlimited projects on it and you can see real-time PDF previews as you write your document. You can also collaborate with other people and see what they are typing in real-time like Google Documents. This is especially useful if you want your friend, colleague or supervisor to review your work. I have used Overleaf since my undergrad years. I never had any problems using it and definitely recommend using it. There are online and offline alternatives to Overleaf including TechMaker, TechStudio, Atom, Kite, etc. You can start from scratch or use a template that they have. I found LaTeX a bit difficult to use at first, but quickly got the hang of it. You don't need to be able to code to use LaTeX. You only need to learn the basic syntax to help organize the document and how to insert figures, equations, and etc. For this, I use tutorials on overleaf.com, LaTeX Stack Exchange, 
and YouTube videos. I've been using connected papers, Mendeley and Overly for my undergrad, masters and now PhD studies. These tools will definitely make your life a lot easier. Hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below what study tips you want to explore and I will try to answer them in future videos. Thank you.